Hi, my name is Elizabeth Garland, and I'm the composer of Precipice and the producer of this film. I want to introduce you today to someone whom I greatly admire and who suffered an unimaginable loss during COVID. Um, this is my friend, Justin Trigger. Thanks for being here today, Justin. Thanks for having me, Elizabeth. As many of us in the Albuquerque, Santa Fe region and the state of New Mexico, the whole country and in fact the world, um, cope with our losses and um, begin to heal and recover from COVID, uh, we look for ways to acknowledge those that we've lost. And I feel like the way you and your, your wife, Beth, and your young daughter, Maeve, have decided to honor the loss of your son during um, COVID is really remarkable. Um, just for you to know, uh, Justin and Beth's 16-year-old son, Ezra Traeger Tarrant, died suddenly of a pulmonary embolism during March 2020. It was the first week of lockdown in New Mexico, and so they were unable to receive comfort during their grief from many of their friends and family. I know that many of you are intimately familiar with this scenario. Um, <clears throat> your son was a remarkable musician and person, and I had the honor of knowing him since he was little. Um, and teaching him composition and piano. And I, I know that you have create, come to create this memorial foundation for him because of his love of music. Would you like to speak to that a bit? Yeah, so just a little bit more about Ezra. Um, Beth always calls him my beautiful boy, a beautiful young man. He was so talented in so many things. Academically, he loved to read. He was a great friend. Um, he had a great sense of humor. But really, his identity um, and really what nourished him most was music. And so his first uh, experience with music was when he was seven. He had to take piano and composition with you, and we had no idea what we really were, um, I don't want to say unleashing, but almost like investing in and growing in his life by bringing music to it. Um, he moved on to middle school where he started trumpet and that just exposed a whole new world for him about thinking about music and the music opportunities. Uh, he loved music, he did jazz band, he did regular band. In uh, his last year in middle school he convinced his band teacher to let him start French horn so he could be an intermediate and advanced band and jazz band for all of his electives. Yeah, so incredible. Um, and at the same time, he was at the Hispanic Cultural Center, he was doing Circo Latino, that's where they uh, compose and uh, perform all their music for all their shows. And Ezra started as a student, but he was instantly one of the composers um, and playing piano and then trumpet, and then ultimately became a counselor and taught other kids music. Um, and then in high school, um, the French horn really um, opened up to him. And uh, there was one year when he was doing trumpet, French horn, and cello. I think that was ninth grade. And he even took uh, foreign language after school so he can get the two credits out of the way in one year so he could do more, just nonstop band. But really he found nourishment and love in, in playing the French horn and um, uh, just excelled at it yeah. and did all state band, did Southwest Honor Band, did Albuquerque Symphony, and Ultimately, you know, that uh, what he told um, my partner, Beth, is that he feels most alive when he was playing music. And so... Um, as, as someone who watched him compose and play music, I, I can totally uh, see that that was absolutely his heart. You know, and he, he would just... Uh, come up with the most incredible and unique and remarkable deep pieces um, when he was when he was uh, performing and playing. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you tell me a bit about the foundation that you're starting in his honor? Yeah. Thank you. Um, my mother and I were talking on the phone, and she asked, "How do we 
keep his memory present and alive. And our first thought was, well, uh, Albuquerque High Band um, was such a special space for him, not just for the music, but for the community as a young man going into a high school that it was, and it really um, was so important to him. So he was like, oh, let's do a scholarship for a graduating senior in Albuquerque yeah. High Band. Um, and our standard wasn't necessarily um, the best musician, but just like that positive person who just loves to be part of that community and, and an asset to the community. And then the more we looked into it and talked to other people um, in the kind of philanthropy community, it was like, well, maybe we sh and we were basically we're going to like write some checks every year right, out of our own accounts. And um, we we're I'm like, well, we learned that they can set up a memorial fund through the community foundation, certain rules. And how could we take the idea of what Ezra loves so much and bring that to others? Like, wouldn't that be the best way to honor and remember him? Yeah. Um, is we were lucky enough um, to have the resources to pay for certain programs and opportunities. And can we um, use his name and his memory? Um, to provide that to other people. So the, the goal is to support young musicians in New Mexico to participate in providing scholarships to these programs, whether it be Circle Latino, whether that be um, Albuquerque Youth Symphony, um, and participating in band programs throughout that. Um, that's what he loved, that's what he enjoyed, and so the best way to honor him is to provide that opportunity to others. Awesome. I, I love it. I think it's so fantastic. And so, from what I understand, the Albuquerque Community Foundation is going to endow this foundation in perpetuity um, once you reach a certain goal level. Yes. Um, do you mind if we can talk about yeah. what, what is that goal level and what, what do we need to do to get you to that? Yeah, it, it sounds a little daunting, um, and it makes sense, right? Uh, there's experts in this, so the goal, at a minimum, you have to raise $25,000 in order to even start giving, and we're hoping, oh, maybe in a couple of years we'll get there, um, but we're only about $5,000 shy right now. That's and, fantastic. That's and, amazing. And the goal is to go beyond, because the more you go beyond, they invest it, and we can give more scholarships. So the more that, uh, that fund is endowed and it'll grow money is the more we can spread it and share it. Um, I, I'm really in awe of your effort in this and, um, as a, you know, as a mom, I can't even imagine, um, but I do, I do th hope that were something that tragic to befall any of us, that we would do what you're doing and turn it into something so beautiful. Thank you. Um, our loss is immense and, and can't be replaced. Um, but Ezra also had a keen sense of social Sorry. justice and doing right for the community. One of his English teachers um, even uh, sent us a note about that, um, one of the debates they had in class and how he just had clarity about doing good in the world and doing what's right. Certainly. So between Certainly. the music and that, um, and you know, it, it, it feels good to honor him. Absolutely. And not just, what, part of our grief process is honoring him and contributing. I, I'm so, so pleased that um, you have come today to share this with all of us. And I sincerely hope that all of you watching will consider giving generously to this very worthy cause so that we can help spread Ezra's love of music in, in the future. Um, can we just talk for one quick second about what this scholarship might look like for someone, how can they apply? Yes. What is there anything that, that we can do? Thank you. Um, so because we've been focusing on fundraising, we really haven't thought about the details. Um, we're mostly going to work with the organizations. We'll work with Circle Latino. We'll work with the Albuquerque High Band, Albuquerque Youth Symphony to find out who uh, might benefit from it and kind of uh, provide funds directly to them. We are also um, going to work with Albuquerque High Band boosters so that the graduating senior um, from Albuquerque High Band gets funds and some flexibility, not limited to just going to tuition, but if they needed to buy an instrument or just to 
pay rent so they can go to college, um, to have that flexibility to support uh, students like yourself. That's, that's awesome. Um, well, Justin, I just want to say thank you again so much uh, for coming today, for being willing to speak um, about this and to, um, to be part of this film, which is all about healing and recovery. Um, so thank you. Thank you I really, you. really appreciate it. Yeah. And um, now you'll see on your screen the information. So please go to the website and donate. And we will show this again at the end of the film, but now is a great time to um, give generously so that this love of music can continue. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Nicole Kessel. I'm the director of photography on the music video you just enjoyed. And I'm joined here by three of the wonderful crew members on this project. And I'm going to let each of you introduce yourselves now. So let's start here. <laughs> um, my name is Trinity Wolf. I'm a UNM student, film major. Um, I just moved here from Japan, actually, <laughs> when it's a very big culture shock. So what, uh, why <laughs> filmmaking? What got you into filmmaking um, to begin with? It was a gradual thing. I started out loving photography, and then that introduced me to yearbook in my high school. Um, and then my yearbook teacher introduced me to video production, and that's where I really found my passion in filmmaking, just um, making productions with my peers in high school. That's wonderful. Thank you, Trinity. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello, my name is Raina Harper, and um, this is my fourth year, my senior year with at UNM in the Film and Digital Arts program. And um, definitely uh, I'm, was excited to be involved in this project. So what drew you into filmmaking to begin with? It was, uh, it was really the, the process of making uh, films with, with friends and family members, especially uh, through high school and, um, and collaborating to, to uh, put films together. And especially the editing process mm -hmm. was, was, uh, was really um, something that captured my interest. And, um, and working to make uh, fun ideas happen through a collaborative process was really excellent. And, um, and it's something that I developed like in, later on in making shorter documentaries that, for, uh, for, that were like informational and, and, then, um, and then developing those uh, and, and seeing a, a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of good growth coming from them. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and uh, that, and that was really uh, what made me decide it was wh what I wanted to pursue, and, um, and especially learning more about the art of filmmaking and seeing the, the styles of different directors made me appreciate it a whole lot more. I think you make a really good point about the collaborative nature of this, hence you know, uh, uh, us sitting here together, and um, it really does take that you know, filmmaking, and uh, thank you, Raina. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, my name is Thomas Ropp, and I am a sophomore music performance and music theory major at UNM. And I guess what really drew me into filmmaking initially was, of course, soundtracks and that sort of thing. And that is most certainly my, my passion. But in a wider sense, I really appreciate the like, collaborative nature of film and also the way it brings together essentially every art form we have of like both visual and audio and then everything else that it kind of encompasses. Yeah, great point. And I think that leads us to our next point is, is what drew you to this project. So Trinity, do <laughs> you want to start us off? So what drew me to this project is the fact that it was a music video. I have done productions with sports and theater and um, creative projects as well, but I've never done a music video. And I thought that this would have been a great opportunity to branch out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and uh, try something new with um, production and film. Yeah, and I think for all of us, right, this was a really new thing, myself included. Uh, and so my background is uh, in research, and I've done commercial production, but uh, so this was new territory uh, for, for, for all, all of us. Of us. <laughs> so we, we really learned a lot through the process, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. But Raina, do you want to talk about why this project, what resonated with you? Definitely. It was uh, when you shared out the opportunity to participate in this in this project through for, for us students. Um, it, it seemed a r really unique one working mm -hmm. on uh, working on a project with that with uh, people that were really passionate about it. Such mm -hmm. a unique music group, especially um, seeing that it was uh, one of the very few uh, with, in, involved with one of the very few women who was uh, established in this state or region as a classical composer. Mm -hmm. And um, and and truly meeting uh, with the with the members of this group and uh, and being being on such beautiful locations such as the foothills mm -hmm. and, uh, and and seeing like we film as the sunrise and uh, and combined with their very unique uh, co costuming and uh, and m instrumentation and, and styles it was uh, it was it made me realize wow I was really uh, lucky to have the opportunity to do this mm -hmm. 
Yeah, all of you were on set on time that morning at 6 a.m. I like impressive, really. It's, it was, uh, you know, just shows your dedication to this craft and um, to this project in particular. Thank you, Raina. On time and very cold. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, drawing into this process, uh, project, excuse me, of course, is the music. Um, that's been a large part of my life for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But besides that, of course, um, one was the material that the project focused on mm -hmm. and sort of things. It, um, it encompasses a lot for <laughs> what, what we're doing here. And beyond that, especially the collaborative nature of the project mm -hmm. and the stress of like, we're all, we're all kind of in this and we're all learning together and we're all collaborating together. And so there, there's just such a large mixture of ideas and like backgrounds and different ways to look at things that I think really came together here. And I think I'm really excited to see where it goes. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Thomas. And I, you touch on you know, the COVID as well being an important theme in this project. And I, I think um, I'd love to hear actually what you, what your experiences were and, and where you're at now with things. Well, um, I I know that um, I was in Japan when COVID started taking off, mm -hmm. um, and I know that we actually locked down and mask mandates and all of that, mm -hmm. even before most of the United States did. Um, and <laughs> it was funny because I think when I first came to uh, back to America. Um, a lot of states still didn't require masks. So I was uh, walking around with a mask on and people kind of gave me a funny look like, what are you doing? <laughs> but um, it, it's been um, very, very trial and error. Um, mm -hmm. It's been a lot very hard, especially in Japan and uh, with military families and such. Um, there's... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, a lot of people have lost a lot of loved ones. Mm -hmm. And um, fortunately, uh, everyone in my family is vaccinated and healthy and maintaining social distancing. And um, my, my thoughts go out to everyone who has lost a loved one during this very hard time. And I think that really resonated in the music. Mm -hmm. And even while I was listening to the music on set, I, I kind of felt really emotional, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I can't cry now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got to save it for later, and um, you can really feel it through the music, and I think that just kind of made me a lot more passionate about this project. Yeah, the, the way music can help us um, feel, right? Mm -hmm. When it's, It was difficult when we were in the moment of, of living through this pandemic, right, to... Uh, to fully absorb it and so now we're sort of in this process of, of dealing with that trauma and yeah. the music does it does help in significant ways thank you for saying that trinity yeah and throughout yeah, yeah definitely throughout uh the the period in which we've dealt with this pandemic it's uh, uh it's it's been uh it's of course been rough in so many ways mm -hmm. like um I, in in my in my circle of family and friends several uh either have uh that been uh, very much at, at risk of of having serious uh, health detriments, or um, or been been involved in communities where there's been major spread, mm -hmm. and um, and it, it's it's certainly been uh, it it's been tough to uh, to 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 de deal with every one of those aspects, and 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 also when it comes to um, what what we. Want, want to do and pursue like there's been a lack of uh, co co connection personally um, mm -hmm. for for uh, for a large part of the last year and a half um, with uh, the with the ability with the ne necessity of uh, being uh, being distance and mm -hmm. and uh, and the, and especially um, with with what we we've been wanting to do like in artistic pursuits of uh, of being together, together with others, or, or, like, as, like, developing projects, or, mm -hmm. when, or even when it comes to uh, having the emotional strength to like put energy towards it, it's uh, 
it's something that that that's caused um, a, lo a lot of uh, stress and, and so uh, and with the, with this project it the, so so many of the emotions that that have uh, have affected you know creators such as the musical group that we worked with mm -hmm. um, it, it really uh, came across I, I feel and, and um, he hearing the 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 music that that they've created and and uh, and our opportunity to uh, to get together to work on this music video project, it, it those emotions really really came out and uh, and and uh, I hope hope there's a lot of catharsis that people feel through it. Yeah, you make a really good point about the the loss of collaboration we all felt, um, and I think what made this really special is one of the first opportunities for us to come together as artists to collaborate in this way was this, yeah. and so um, it was exciting in that sense, and, and it was cathartic in many ways. Thank you, Reno, it was really? great. Yeah, I, I think kind of like coming together, making new things again, especially in music, has music has very much been affected by COVID. Mm -hmm. And I know I've spent the last two years essentially trying to play horn to someone on the other side of a computer screen, and that just doesn't work so well. Yeah. And so it was, it was very nice to not only hear live music again, but to hear live music in a full group and in a place like the Foothills, too. It doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I mean, COVID, like, what has it not impacted, quite yeah. frankly? But especially my family and I moved from South Dakota to here in New Mexico um, in last July. So kind of in the heart of everything. Mm -hmm. And so that was, that was an experience, to say the least, for me, especially because um, we got here and starting school, starting school virtually mm -hmm. and everything like that, I was kind of unable to make a lot of connections in that sort of thing, and especially not knowing anyone coming from, you know, halfway across the United mm -hmm. States, really kind of threw, threw a wrench in a lot of the things that I wanted to do. And so, like, meeting people, meeting people to collaborate with especially, has just been a phenomenal experience, and I'm frankly very, very happy to be back at it. Yeah. Especially cons seeing as how uh, nice and accommodating they were and willing to, to really talk about things and, and uh, how how they'd like to, you know, s see greater involvement from, uh, from, from younger generations. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. great points. So the project as a whole, you know, being on set again and, and making something like this, what were some things you learned through the process or challenges you experienced? And we'll just start again with Trinity here. Uh, should have wore two pairs of socks. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was very cold. I was unprepared for that. And then I remember Thomas telling me that it was just going to get colder that morning, like just before the sunrise, and it did. So that was shocking. <laughs> um, I remember holding the camera because I do a lot of handheld um, work with the camera. Mm -hmm. I was shaking, and I could see it on the monitor, and I'm like, can I warm myself up just so I can stop shaking so I can get this shot. Mm -hmm. um, the tripods came in significant use. And um, just sometimes just working with people, you learn a lot of things um, in a collaborative environment such as film production. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I loved working with all of you. It was such a pleasure. Yes. <laughs> and I know I learned a lot. Um, and not just concerning the camera, but also concerning music, because I'm I'm not a big music person, um, and I know Thomas <laughs> taught me a lot with music, and um, it was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, and there's only so much you can learn, you know, in in theory or watching videos. It's the yeah, act yeah. of doing it, and I know for myself as well, I learned a lot through this process. Okay. And, the skills each of you bring and you know not seeing you in the classroom and seeing you in action it was really such a, a special treat for me um, and really the you get to the collaborative element comes to life in ways that you can't replicate um, in a book or um, over zoom over zoom, <laughs> right, right, right. So zoom has its limits oh, <laughs> how about you Reina? it was it was, uh, it, it was um, a real def definitely excellent opportunity to te test our uh, our skills and ability to communicate um, mm -hmm. 
like um, in in terms of uh, like we, we needed to uh, record sound or, uh, or and but realized that there wasn't the right right chord with us so so we had to uh, make make workarounds or uh, or or uh, or just make sure that we had all the the communications for like how we wanted lights set up on the stage or and uh, and what angles we were we were safely able to get it was it was uh, very very uh, very educational yeah in that way I like the dynamic element that you point out it's is very true it's very dynamic in that way thank you Raina and Thomas absolutely yeah um, lots of things to learn <laughs> I I think well one of the biggest things for me is of course music is music is my strong area and then being behind the camera is very much not. And so, <laughs> Trinity, vice versa, I learned a whole lot from you very quickly. Um, but just getting used to getting used to that and especially like looking looking for like that shot or something like that. And beyond beyond just the camera, um, you know, deciding deciding locations, everything that kind of goes on behind the scenes, and of course like Reina was saying, a lot of figuring things out. It's like, oh, that didn't work. Like, what's, what's the next plan? And especially, um, I remember up in the foothills, we, we were trying to hike up to various places, and certain ones didn't work, and so you had to improvise from there, especially. And just everything that went into it, and just kind of finding, finding what worked despite everything else, which I think goes along with the COVID theme pretty well. Yeah, right, yeah. Nice point, Thomas. Thank you. Well, I'm excited to see what you guys do next. So uh, and thank you for being here and for chatting with us today. Of course. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. <laughs> Hi, and thank you so much for watching our film. Um, I'm Elizabeth Garland, the director of Chiraco, and I'm here today with Keely Mackey, who is my good friend and a member of my co-member of Delphi Project. So we started on our journey then in 2019, mm -hmm. after we met, um, going from there to the Cachette, um, mm -hmm. uh, here, here residency, where I was a resident and had composed a lot of music for this mini ballet with um, an incredible choreographer in collaboration. And Keely was able to come in in <laughs> two weeks, learn all of the music. In five and days, <laughs> learn all the music, yeah. <laughs> was a lot of and music. put it all together. And um, so uh, we... And then we went to Vienna. We went to Vienna for the World Composers Concert. Um, and then we decided to become Delphi Project. Mm -hmm and really move forward um, creating new collaborative works together, which all leads us to um, this piece that we're working on today, Scirocco. Yeah, Elizabeth had said in the late summer of 2019, we need to do a performance together. It needs to be like late October, and there was about six weeks. And so it was pretty magical how everything came together for when, from when the veil when the veil thins and then which is a which piece was that we we put yeah, together it was like an hour and a half long and, performance yeah. with our music combination between yours mine and rob janoff's and professional ballet dancers who got yeah. to improvise and play with long uh live music our live music so it was this great synergistic um experience and also that the audience can participate so because we don't have words People can bring their own experiences with them and have their own processes kind of, I think, on a deeper level and Definitely. be able to engage their own imaginations. Which and, is, uh, again, you know, that that piece was very much um, asking people to, to look within just like we have in this, in this film. And, you know, here we've been reflecting on, on COVID and this being a healing and recovery uh, film uh, where we're all looking over the past year 
a uh, year and a half now, almost two years of um, of COVID, and you know, hoping that people will be able to see their experiences throughout this film through Precipice at the beginning and then through these different pieces um, and the seasons of our of our healing and recovery. Um, and holding space for people. I think that's unique that we're both women composers and musicians. So people have said that our music actually is different. It feels different. It sounds different. And we're also both mothers. So also having that experience of um, nurturing and um, tapping into the elements, the earth, air, fire, water, the seasons, that nature is the ultimate carer and and uh, healer. And so being able Absolutely. to tap into that creative, our creative uh, music, tapping into the plentiful uh, source source yeah. of nature. Yeah. The largest source. Totally. Creative source, so. Um, <clears throat> you know, there have been so many, so many wonderful parts of this, uh, of this project. And I do want to mention, as we're talking about um, tapping into the source, how how many people who came into this project um, were also so giving and generous uh, with their time, with their um, sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And from Nicole Kiesel, the director of photography, to Helen Dundas, the editor, we had wonderful female uh, crew on this piece who all brought a, an energy that was really unique mm -hmm. and healing mm -hmm. um, as well. And so we're hoping that for you today, um, watching this film, that you have found some peace um, and some reflection. And I just wanted to notice, too, that the last... We did several performances after the big performance when the veil thins in 2019 and then our last big performance where we debuted some new pieces nobody knew what was coming but it was just a couple of weeks later it was yeah. yeah and it was the end of february this last performance and then going into lockdown and yeah i start crying i know I'm sorry <laughs> well don't okay <laughs> um yeah i I mean, and we no, no one knew the loss that was that was about to happen, um, and the change to the world. And we're hoping that all of the change that has happened in the world over the past year and a half is difficult and messy and horrific as it's sometimes been, um, will lead to really positive things and to beauty and to more music. And that the next time we perform When the Veil Thins, um, possibly as a film and also in a lovely collaborative atmosphere, people will be able to be together again and experience it in a, in a truly um, relaxed, more <laughs> relaxed mm -hmm. environment. And um, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, well, thank you again. Thank you, Keely, for joining me here and for all of your beautiful music on this um, film. And I really just appreciate you and your heart all the time uh, when we play together. And thank you again for and watching. thank you, Elizabeth, <laughs> for all of your hard work. It's amazing. Oh. It's People don't really understand how many hundreds and thousands of hours are put into something like this, the amount of time. It's, it's intense. For, for creating not just the music, but all of the different aspects I of know. this. So. But it has been you. so rewarding. It has been. So. Yeah.